Hello everybody, my name is Brian and I'm going to do an unboxing of the DJI Inspire 1. I'll try to do this as quickly as possible um, because nobody wants to sit through boring unboxings but we're going to go through and catalog the version D or version 4 of the Inspire 1 and see what uh, DJI has evolved and designed into this new platform. So when you get through your cardboard box and bubble wrap you're met with the DJI travel case. This is a pretty decent case. It's got some nice foam inside from everyone who's been around the internet and seeing exactly what the Inspire One is all about. However, this travel case doesn't actually meet any of the TSA standards here in the United States of America. Um, the TSA will either say that this is too flimsy to be an insured checked bag, or it's too large to be a carry-on bag. It doesn't fit underneath the seat in front of you, nor does it fit in the overhead compartments. The Inspire One comes with TB47 DJI battery packs. These particular battery packs are TSA legal because they generate less than 100 watt hours worth of energy, but the TB48 high capacity batteries that everyone wants because they're back ordered uh, are not TSA legal, so you can't even take them as carry on baggage. Okay, enough gabbing, let's get to the inside of this thing. So when you open this case, you are met with the Inspire One itself, the master controller, the slave controller, because this is the dual controller version. And you get the propellers in individually bagged, nice piece of Velcro here to actually keep them safe. And then the uh, camera case. This is where the 4K, real 4K camera is, not just UHD. Uh, this camera does generate a 4096 by 2160 image. This uh, neutral density filter comes with it and I'd actually recommend going in and cutting out a little slot out of this foam from things I've been reading that you can take this jewel case and just slip it right down there uh, that way you don't leave it here and it'll rattle around between your gimbal and the camera itself. So let's get right to the heart of the machine. People know what radios look like, people know what the camera looks like and we'll check on this. Well there have been four different iterations of the Inspire One since its inception. The version four, how we can tell this apart, has a one piece yoke at the bottom here. And I will bring that right up so you can see what that looks like. So this one piece machined Y yoke is probably a 6061 aluminum, maybe a 7075, we're not sure yet. And that's what delineates the version four from the version three, two, and one, or the version D. So one thing that was actually pointed out to me specifically by my retailer was to know exactly where the bind button is. Well, here's the bind button for everyone who's going to miss it when they have to go and bind their radio. You will need something non-conductive and then you will also want to look right up in here and there is a little tiny red anodized button and you'll want something non-conductive to push it. Don't try and push it with a knife or a screwdriver or anything else because this is your brand new Inspire One. So I'll get back to you when all the batteries are charged and we'll take the next step of setting this machine up. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. Today is the day after I've received the Inspire One. Um, I have gone through, I've charged the flight battery, I've charged both remotes, I've done firmware updates to the Inspire One. I've also um, titled it and linked everything to my phone. I've created a master slave with the uh, two remotes that are on there and both of the remotes seem to work well with either my iPhone 6 or my uh, Google Nexus 7. Here's the part that everybody loves to see is taking the machine out of the box, transforming it from its travel mode into its landing mode, attaching the camera gimbal, getting your iDevice or Android device onto the transmitter, seeing the HD video downlink, and basically getting the entire machine ready to fly and ready to fly safely. Um, I can't stress safety enough. I see a lot of things and even I was gifted a DJI Phantom 1 from the sky. It crashed about 12 feet from where I was sitting on the beach. And these things are fallible. Um, they're only run by software. So we'll see how things go from here. Okay, so here we are back at the case. Uh, you'll wanna be gentle with the arms when you lift this whole thing out because there are only a couple pivot points on the inside. Uh, the worm drive is pretty robust, but I wouldn't recommend just trusting it and grabbing the frame here and just yanking up. If you wanna grab each of the arms and just kind of walk it out, makes it a little bit more gentle. 
So we're gonna take this whole thing and slide it backwards. So as we go about grabbing everything out of the case, we'll want the flight battery, we'll want your master transmitter or your only transmitter, and then you'll want your camera case. I've seen some individuals who do an unboxing video and they'll immediately put the propellers on the motors. I don't think that's a very good idea because these propellers, because the machines are getting bigger, everything is getting heavier, the propellers are getting bigger, and they are likely to either break or take one of your fingers off if this thing decides to have a mind of its own. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna transform this from its travel mode into its landing mode and then attach the camera gimbal. So install your flight battery, grab the either side and just press down with your thumbs. There's no problem there. Always turn your transmitter on first, then your flight battery. We'll lift up, cycle the landing switch four times and it will move itself into its landing position. So I did move just barely out of the sun. Um, when you go to power this whole thing on, power on your transmitter first, first on, last off. It's an old habit from flying radio controlled airplanes. All right, this goes through its IMU calibration and we'll check itself out. All right. So one of the things that I have done was inside the camera case here was to cut out a little bit of the foam right here on the corner so that way I can slip that neutral density filter or any of the other filters which would be a circular polarizer or if you're a Polar Pro fan you can get uh, neutral density sixes, nines, etc. And then I also have 3D printing a tulip lens hood for this camera. So just like on the uh, the camera itself, I painted a white line where these align. This one literally just drops off. The one on the camera actually has some teeth on it, so that way you do have to just pop it like that. But this white line will allow me to figure out exactly how to align it every single time I go to align it. So you put the camera on, align the white lines, and then twist. Now, okay, so now we're going to hook up our phone to the DJI Inspire radio. Make sure not to push your volume buttons. I did that and it muted my phone for a while. So, one of the interesting things I found while I was working with this yesterday was that the phone actually charges from the battery inside the transmitter, which may or may not be a good thing. Your iPhone or iDevice will ask you specifically, do you want to trust this computer? And you do kind of want to say yes. So once inside the DJ app, if DJI app, if you touch camera, You'll go in, you'll find the machine and its state. Uh, mine originally stated that I needed to calibrate everything. I needed to update firmware. Everything was out of date. So I did all that yesterday. If you just follow the instructions in the manual or online, that'll get you through without an issue. You'll see that you have live video and that's pretty much the way it works. It's just very simple, plug and play, ready to go out the door. Uh, some things, to test would be to either push the yaw back and forth, the camera slightly moves. And I'm not sure if you guys can see that from where you are. Right there. Uh, other things to check, if you lift up the Inspire 1, you'll be able to uh, cycle the landing gear up and down. It does have a safety feature that you cannot actually cycle the landing gear while it's on the ground, which is kind of nice. If you want to find out whether or not your motors spin, this is why I never put the props on initially, is to test. Now the Inspire 1's idling, and you can turn it back off just as easily. So, I guess what we'll do is we'll do a compass calibration, and then we'll do the IMU checks, and put the propellers on and see if it flies. So again, I can't stress it enough, 
don't put your propellers on the machine until you're actually ready to fly it. Uh, ever since the iteration of the Phantom 1, where you have the clockwise and counterclockwise threaded shafts on the propellers, it makes it so easy to put them on and take them off. Don't put them on until you're actually ready to fly. I don't want to see anybody with less fingers than they started with. So we'll power on the remote, power on the Inspire. The camera will go through and do all of its victory dance. And what I'm going to end up doing is once I get into the DJI app, I will take the compass. So we pick up the machine, the light's yellow, rotate it around. Light goes green, put it head down. And the light goes off. If the light goes off, that's a good thing. That means you're ready to fly. Everything looks good. I have a 15 satellite GPS lock. I have 98% on the flight battery. Everything's pretty much ready. So we're gonna go and attach our propellers. So each bag of propellers comes with two propellers. One has a gray dot on it, one has a black dot on it. Just like you see here, gray is on one side, black is on the other. And you take those and just align them with the black shafts and the gray shafts on your Inspire. So to align these, you have black mounts and silver mounts. Take these, press down and twist. and they will lock in. And I'll have to label that these are the propeller bags. I label everything, catalog everything. All right, because I don't have a camera operator, what I'm gonna do is just probably put this into a hover. Okay, so that says that the machine's ready to go. not the uh, most calm day. We do have some trade winds coming through, but it seems to hold itself pretty steady. Give it a little yaw. Give it a little uh, yaw this way. Right now the controls are very robotic. Um, much more locked in and digital than what I'm used to seeing on my APM controllers or the open pilot controllers, but everything seems to be in order. The image from the camera is rock solid. The gimbal's doing its job, even though it is kind of shaking around a little bit. And uh, what we'll do is we'll give you a, just a taste of the, the palm trees right there in the wind. Go up, we'll strafe a little to the right. Strafe a little to the left. A lot of this I'm very much relying on line of sight because that's how I'm used to flying. All right, so we'll turn that off. And I'll see you in about five to 10 minutes once I land. So in a windy environment, it does seem to hold its own pretty well. Um, it still seems to be overcompensating, so I will adjust the gains to suit my particular flying style. But before I do that, I will save a configuration file if I can, specifically so that I can get back to factory defaults. Overall, I'm fairly impressed. So here we are just removing all the propellers. Pretty easy, push down, make sure to hold the motor and then give it a quarter turn depending on which direction you're going. So that's pretty much it. It was an uneventful flight. If you liked the video, like it. If you didn't, dislike it. If your feelings are more complex than either one of these, by all means, leave a comment below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, other things that you want me to cover on this machine, please ask and I'll push them up. Thank you.